This is basic topics in anesthesiology, intravenous fluid, fluid therapy during anesthesia. My name is Ryan Romeo. I'm Associate Professor of Anesthesiology at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. I have nothing to disclose. Starting with water, electrolyte, glucose requirements, and disposition. Body fluid compartments. Total body water, 60% of total body weight in adults, and 80% of total body weight in infants. And the total body water is composed of intracellular fluid, or ICF, this is 40% of the total body weight, and extracellular fluid, or ECF, which is 20% of total body weight. The extracellular composition is further broken down into interstitial fluid, or ISF, which is 15% of total body weight. This fluid is high in sodium and chloride and low in protein. And intravascular fluid, or IVF, is 5% of total body weight. And this fluid is high in protein. And then the intracellular composition, which is 20% of total body weight, is high in potassium and high in protein. Next, electrolyte regulation. Sodium is regulated by aldosterone, atrial nitretic peptide, or ADH. Potassium is regulated by aldosterone, epinephrine, insulin, and intrinsic renal mechanisms. Calcium is regulated by parathyroid hormone and vitamin D. Magnesium is regulated by primary renal mechanisms, parathyroid hormone, which is a minor influence, and vitamin D, which is a minor influence. Phosphorus is regulated by primary renal mechanisms and parathyroid hormone, which is as a minor influence. Continuing with water, electrolyte, glucose requirements and disposition, talk about daily electrolyte requirements. Sodium has a daily requirement about 75 milliequivalents per liter, potassium about 40 milliequivalents per liter. Daily glucose requirements vary. Surgical stress causes hyperglycemic response. And only infants and patients receiving insulin or drugs interfering with glucose synthesis are at risk for hypoglycemia. <clears throat> Therefore, glucose-containing solutions for fluid maintenance are not necessary. Iatrogenic hyperglycemia can limit effectiveness at fluid resuscitation. And in critically ill patients, evidence suggests tight control of plasma glucose between 80 and 110 milligrams per deciliter is associated with reduced mortality and morbidity. Crystalloid versus colloid. Crystalloid solutions help maintain normal body fluid composition. These include 5% dextrose in water, known as D5W, 5% dextrose in 0.45% sodium chloride, known as D5 plus quarter normal saline, 0.9% sodium chloride, known as normal saline, and lactated ringers. Colloid solutions, on the other hand, help expand the intravascular volume by remaining in the intravascular space. Synthetic examples of colloid include starch and dextran, and natural examples of colloid include albumin and blood. The advantages of crystalloid include lower cost, greater urinary flow, and replaces interstitial fluid. While well, disadvantages of crystalloid include transient hypodynamic improvement, peripheral edema, and pulmonary edema. Advantages of colloid include the smaller infused volume, prolonged increase in plasma volume, greater peripheral edema, and less cerebral edema. While well, disadvantages of colloid include greater cost, possible coagulopathy, dextran, more common than head of starch to cause this. Pulmonary edema can occur, in particularly with capillary leak states. 
uh, decreased glomerular filtration rate, and osmotic diuresis. Next, we're going to talk about types of fluid losses. First type is uh, deficit. Um, this is from the patient being NPO overnight. <clears throat> Third space is another type of fluid loss. This is when an isotonic transfer of the extracellular fluid from functional body fluid compartments to non-functional ones occur. The third type of fluid loss are insensible losses. And these are losses uh, from evaporation of water from the respiratory tract, sweat, feces, urination, fever. And then the fourth type of fluid loss <clears throat> would be blood loss. So knowing your types of losses, there are certain guidelines for interoperative crystalloid replacement. Isotonic electrolyte-containing solutions to replace insensible fluid losses can be used. Isotonic electrolyte-containing solutions to replace third space losses are used. <clears throat> you want to replace one mil of blood loss with three mil milliliters of crystalloid and maintain your output about 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour. Fluid deficit calculations can be done as follows. For maintenance, you can calculate how much fluid the patient needs. Taking their first kilogram, 10 kilograms of body weight, you would give 4 milliliters per kilogram per hour. Then for the next 10 to 20 kilograms of body weight, add another 2 milliliters per kilogram per hour. And for each kilogram above 20 kilograms of body weight, add another milliliter per kilogram per hour. And this would be their maintenance fluids. For blood loss, crystalloid replacement of their blood loss you can use 3 milliliters of crystalloid, such as lactated ringers, or normal saline, for every 1 milliliter blood loss. And for colloid replacement, you can use 1 milliliter of colloid for every one milliliter of blood loss. For the patient's third space losses, if they are undergoing a procedure involving very minimal trauma, you can use four milliliters per kilogram per hour. If they have a procedure involving moderate trauma to their tissues, six milliliters per kilogram per hour would be used. In procedures involving extreme trauma, you can use upwards of eight milliliters per kilogram per hour to use for their third space losses, to replace those third space losses. Now talking specifically about normal saline, which is sodium chloride, this is a sterile, non-pyrogenic solution for fluid and electrolyte replenishment. It contains no antimicrobial agents, and the normal pH in a bag of normal saline is about 5.5, typically ranging from about 4.5 to 7. 0.45% sodium chloride injection contains 4.5 grams per liter of sodium chloride with an osmolarity of 154 milliosmoles per liter. It contains 77 milliequivalents per liter of sodium and 77 milliequivalents per liter chloride. And 0.9% sodium chloride injection contains 9 grams per liter of sodium chloride with an osmolarity of 3. 108 milliosmoles per liter. It contains 154 milliequivalents per liter sodium and 154 milliequivalents per liter chloride. Lactated ringers. Uh, this is a solution that is isotonic with blood. In a large volume resuscitation over several hours, lactated ringers maintains a more stable blood pH as compared to isotonic saline. One liter of Ringer's lactate, or lactated Ringer's, solution contains 130 milliequivalents of sodium, which is 130 millimoles per liter, 109 milliequivalents of chloride, 28 milliequivalents of lactate, 4 milliequivalents of potassium ion, and 3 milliequivalents of calcium ion. Lactated Ringers has an osmolarity of 273 milliosmoles per liter. The lactate is metabolized into bicarbonate by the liver. And Lactated Ringers solution alkalizes via the sodium cations it leaves behind. <clears throat> Plasmolite is another type of crystalloid solution. 
It's used for intravenous infusion with varying electrolyte formulations. Generally, this solution has a composition that mimics human physiologic plasma electrolyte concentrations, osmolality, and pH. One liter of plasmolite solution contains 140 mil equivalents of sodium, 5 mil equivalents of potassium, 3 mil equivalents of magnesium, 98 mil equivalents of chloride, 27 mil equivalents of acetate, 23 mil equivalents of gluconate, and the osmolarity is 294 milliosmoles per liter. D5W, this is dextrose 5% in water. It consists of 278 millimoles per liter of dextrose, and a 5% dextrose solution contains 5 grams per 100 milliliters of dextrose. And this concludes fluid and electrolyte discussion.